Welcome to Crafting with Carrie. Today I'm sharing a review of a Gilded Journal Maker Crate by KiwiCo. In the crate you get a booklet that has a QR code that takes you directly to the videos that show you how to make these projects. They also give you a little bit of inspiration on one of the page layouts and they always have the history of the craft that um, is in this kit. So this kit comes with lots of supplies. There are needles and um, bookmarks that have different two different colors on each side. So there's lots of choice. Then there's the binding of the journal tools. So they give lots of clips to be able to hold things in place. They also have thread that is the that you're actually stitching it together with. There's cotton gloves for the gilding process as well. There's a sil sealant and gilding paste and a little tray to put it in. Some practice um, pieces of fabric and then the leaf. There's gold, rose gold and silver. There's a nice little fluffy brush that comes in the kit. It's really uh, nice quality. This is a stone braying tool, which I think is pretty cool. So yeah, the quality is pretty nice for the tools that they give you. There are some tools for um, the paste that we're going to be using. And as well, they sent this little dowel and some foam shapes. We'll be able to use those as little stamps if we would like to. Um, there's also there's a few different shapes there to choose from, and there's also a big rectangle, so you could use it as a rectangle, or maybe cut your own shapes out of it. It has a pre-punched signature. Um, there are lots of pages, and there are two journals in this kit and they each have um, so there's a different color on the inside and the outside and there's actually different textures on the inside and outside so you probably could just flip the flip it around like that too if you wanted the different texture or different color on the outside of your journal I'm going to um, do a do something for the inside of my journal also and they also send a a mess mat in every kit. So we're moving on to making the images with the gilding paste. I'm doing a little bit of practice here, having some fun, doing some freestyling. Um, in the videos it said that you do not want the paste to be very thick. Oh here's our little pop-in puppy. This is why I'm doing a voiceover. Actually, I probably would have ended up doing a voiceover anyway because it ended up being a very long video and I have this quite sped up for you guys to, um, so it doesn't take all day for you to watch me crafting all day. So when I put that little stamp on there, oh my goodness, I'm a stamper now, so um, that just brought out a whole world of possibilities. Um, Make sure you wash out the glue out of your brush so um, that it doesn't ruin your brushes. You'll be able to use those for a long time. The brushes are crimped instead of just glued together, so that is one thing I'm happy about. So here you can see I took the dauber, I took an old, uh, a stamp that I made from a previous Maker Crate, and I'm creating my scene. I was very curious to see how this was going to turn out. Um, I decided that I needed to ground the image a little bit so I just took the paintbrush and um, painted on a landscape with some grass. Um, you can see in the red square that it had all completely dried. You don't want there to be any white gilding paste left. It needs to be very um, tacky and um, you want it to be all nice and shiny. There's, you don't want any white left. Later in my video, you're going to see why you don't want to have any white 
wet glue left. You want it to be all dry and tacky. So you put your gilding sheet down and then you put a piece of parchment paper and then you start rubbing um, over top of the parchment paper and it'll start to crack and pull apart. The, it was really enjoyable making this craft, doing this project. And then with your fluffy brush, you rub away all the other little pieces. You can see that you can make quite fine details with this brush. However, my one little snail in the bottom right corner kind of looks like a blob. Maybe we'll pretend it's a rock or something like that. But I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. So then we're going to use silver on the next practice sheet. This time you can really see how the leaf cracks apart from the um, where it's sticking to the adhesive and um, the spaces in between. This gilding leaf sticks to everything. That is probably one thing about this um, crate that uh, you have to be prepared to deal with mess. But isn't that beautiful? So I'm moving on to the actual journals. And since you already saw the whole process, I'm just going to skip you through. I decided to use my stamps. Here, you're going to see a mistake that I made. So I put on my gilding and I used different colors. You can see I used gold on the bottom and silver for the moon. And then I'm trying to clean up and I used a wet wipe. Well, that was the worst thing that I could do because these little gilding flecks really stick to anything that is wet. So this definitely was probably one of the messiest crafts that I have had from these crates, probably the messiest from the, from the um, Kiwi Co crates, maker crate. Everywhere that was wet, these little flecks stuck. So definitely use a dry cloth, maybe even a um, microfiber cloth. But you can see how really beautiful it turned out. And when I had it nice and clean and dry, um, it only stuck to the spots where I wanted it to. But you can see here, after I wiped it with the baby wipe, it it stuck everywhere. So then I tried to accent it with like some purposeful stars. But then by this time, I was getting a little tired. It did take me all day to, or all afternoon to do this activity. And I put the leaf on before it was completely dry. And then they looked like little blobs. So it was a little frustrating, but that's that's what it is. I did really enjoy doing this like, this craft. I would give this Maker Crate a solid five out of five for the amount of materials that you get, the idea, um, the quality of the tools. It was a lot of fun. So next is sealing, and you don't need to watch all that. So I'm skipping it all over, and now we're completely finished sealing. And you can see that there's a bit of a sheen across the entire top because I just I just painted the whole top of both the both of those um, maroon colors. The bookmarks I just cut sealed over top of where the gilding leaf was, as well as this little mushroom. I just went around the portions that had the leaf on it. Um, there is a little sheen where the sealant edges you can kind of see it when I'm moving it around there and then on you can kind of see because I painted the whole front of that one um, you can see where maybe I missed a couple brush strokes I'll have to go back and do that this one you can see more around the frog and the snail on the bottom where the edge of the um, sealant is um, there's my C that Neil, my husband, says turned out to look like a Calgary Flames logo. So I disagree. It's a C for Carrie. Now we're moving on to adding the um, signature. This would be this part. If you are making the crate, you do not have these pages. This is me personalizing the journal for myself because I... 
um, recently discovered junk journals and I absolutely love them. So I'm adding in some of my own um, dyed paper. That one is coffee stained. And I'm using the pages from the kit to figure out the sizes. Now the reason I'm going back and forth is because um, the size of the page is not the same on the inside of the signature as it is on the outside. And I'm swapping out a page from the original kit to a, um, I guess, a junk journal page that I created. So it took me a bit of time to go back and forth. And then I wanted to make sure it was all nice and snug so that those little pre-punched holes that they made were lined up. Now, um, some of these pages I just folded inside. I didn't want to cut the edges off, but a lot of them I just ripped the edges off. So um, it's a lot easier to do this than it is to pull out a, a, cutting, um, a cutting tool or a guillotine or anything like that to try and measure each page separately. And I, I like the character that the ripped edges make there it's pretty straight so just a little bit rough here you can see I found some um, it was a paper bag and I had some grid paper and I had a image to put in the center of the signature here I'm just folding over instead of ripping it off because I want to keep that I can make a pocket or a, a flip out or something um, I put an a uh, big envelope on the outside so I can use that to pop in things um, to store on the outside. Here I'm just going through and making sure that all the pages are the direction and centered where I want them to be. This definitely added a lot more time to making this journal but I, um, in the end, th this is what I want. So it's one way that you can personalize the journals. So I'm clipping in the middle one of the original sheets because it has all the pre-punched holes and I have to re-punch all those holes um, to go through the sheets that I added. Now this is not something that you would have to do with the original kit. The signatures and the covers are pre-punched for you. So there I just took out that um, cover sheet and there's my middle of my signature that I like to always add a piece of art for the middle of my signatures and then I'm wrapping um, just a little piece of scrap paper where the clips are so that I don't um, put a mark on the paper or on the cover of the notebook. There I took four um, of the lengths of the spine of the thread and then I made a knot and I put it in the bot second to the bottom hole and then I just threaded in and out up the entire spine and later you'll see me threading down the entire spine and when I get to the bottom then I'll be again going in to the middle of the um, the spine of the book there to hide the knot. And there you go. I um, I really enjoyed making this this uh, kit. I'm using up those little sample. Um, practice pieces as little pockets. I used one for a pocket on the um, inside of one journal. This um, Fabri-Tac is not in your kit. It's just something I choose to use to glue it together. I'm getting to the end of my bottle there so it's getting getting kind of messy. And then the other one I glued on front on the front of the other journal this was my real world experience creating the gilded journal maker crate by kiwi co 
I definitely think that this crate was worth the value. There was a lot of product, a lot of really um, good quality tools, and I just enjoyed making it. Please follow me with, on Crafting with Carrie if you enjoyed this content, and have a wonderful day.